It's time to talk about Chef Tree with extra sensory Same hand size and girl bleed and attack for 180 I know we need rare candy but if we get it it's crazy HP 2240 Getting price cards it's so easy you gotta believe me When I say you cannot beat me we don't need a Nuzzly from a Cedar to a Chef Tree And we use cards like copycat and soon you'll be able to see the fact That we do it that means you're getting racked a sweet GX Well look at that pairing it with Zorwar Consistency is going hard trading till we finally got everything we need Need to one shot, we even can abuse A great attack to confuse And that spells out bad news Cause in the end you'll totally lose Ha! Episode 180 Shift 3GX, let's go! What's up with you? It's Zapdos TCG here and welcome to episode 180 on my channel. As you know on my channel we always talk about the latest cards and new decks in town so be sure you are subscribed so you don't ever miss out. And also click that little notification bell to be the first to know when a new video pops up on the channel. Okay today we will continue our coverage on the new GX cards of the upcoming Celestial Storm set which will hit the stores in two weeks time. I'll also be opening up a booster box on the channel so look forward to that and in this episode it's all about Shift 3 GX. This brand new GX is a stage 2 grass type with 240 HP which is on pair with things like the Sigui GX so that's uh, pretty hard to one shot which is totally awesome. And do you know what also is awesome? Well the fact that we're a grass type because that means we hit for weakness against popular Pokemon like Lycanroc GX, Lapras GX, Zygarde GX and more and all of those Pokemon saw tournament success here and there so that is already a great thing. The weakness to fire is kind of irrelevant since both Volcanion and Volcanion EX will be leaving the format in the beginning of September. Only Ho-Oh GX might cause a bit of problems here and there but uh, other than that we should be fine or maybe even the new Blaziken GX and the baby Blaziken to go along with that but more on that probably later down on the channel. Its retreat cost is 2 which might leave it stranded in the active position from time to time so Guzma plays will be the ideal way to get him out of the active position or a regular switch uh, the the reason I mentioned this over Floatstone is because Floatstone will be leaving us uh, with the rotation which really sucks to be honest. Uh, although being stuck in the active position isn't as bad as you think since we have a single energy attack at our disposal, the first attack per Plex. It deals 40 damage and leaves the opponent's active Pokemon confused. Sounds familiar? Yeah, it's very comparable with the attack of Espeon GX and that's already seeing a bunch of play here and there, of course with Ability Lock Garboder. Although. 40 damage isn't much, it can one shot things like baby Rockruffs, Frokies and uh, that is already a great start for an attack right there. The addition of confusion makes it really awkward for the opponent. They might be forced to flip a coin and uh, they get a chance to hit their self in their confusion for 30 damage. But remember things like Floatstone will uh, easily uh, get them out of the active position or Guzma. Uh, but after, after Floatstone has been rotated out of the standard format things will be a little bit more awkward for the opponent. So uh, Guzma is also a staple in air every deck so they always ha have an option to get out of the active but uh, if they don't draw into their Guzma of the or if they don't get a Lele to get that Guzma they might be in a situation where they have to pass the turn or uh, be forced to retreat. So that attack perplex is definitely kind of neat. Moving forward, the second attack, Extra Sensori, deals 90 damage for a Grass and a double Carless Energy. This is the exact same damage output like the Sigui GX's Razor Leaf, but it has an effect which makes it way better. If you have the exact same number of cards in your hand as your opponent, you deal an additional 90 damage. So that means 180 for a Grass and a DCE. So basically, if you have uh, the, you and your opponent have the same hand size, you deal 180 damage for two attachments and uh, that ladies and gentlemen is the perfect number if you want to be hitting for one shots in this particular format because we have choice band at, at our disposal and that uh, gets the damage out up to 210 the magical number a lot of popular GX cards will go down easily with that attack think about Zoroark GX boom out of the way Ultra Necrozma GX poof get out of here Rayquaza GX we don't even need choice band for that boom out Boswell GX boom it's out of there we only need choice band uh, in certain situations so I'm already a huge fan of the attack as it is. But how do we fix getting the same number of cards in the hand consistently? Well, there's a lot of options really. The first one is pretty easy. Just use Ultra Bulk cards uh, wisely to discard cards from your hand and to lower your hand size that way. That's the only way if you want to lower your hand size or play out your hand completely. Cards like Cynthia are also great if the opponent has exactly six cards in the hand. Of course, we have N before rotation, although uh, if you're, uh, yeah, the if you have both the exact same price cards remaining, N can be an, ide uh, an ideal card here. 
And of course, Zora Jax's trade has to uh, come up here because with that ability, you can easily draw into more cards in the hand and up your hand size that way. Also, post rotation, there is uh, not enough supporters as it is. We have Judge and Copycat is also back from, uh, yeah, way back. So uh, we have Copycat in the set as well. So both of those cards will make sure that you have the same amount of cards in the hand. Judge uh, uh, forces both players to shuffle their hand into their deck and then you draw four cards. With Copycat, you shuffle your hand into your deck and draw the same amount of cards that the opponent is currently holding. So as you see, matching hand sizes is quite easy, right? And let us all agree that 210 damage, if we have a choice ban of course, for a grass and a DCE, aka two attachments, is very amazing in my book. Finishing the card review, we of course have a GX move. It's called Pandemonium GX and it states the following. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon and uh, the, the opponent shuffles that card and all cards attached to it into their deck. So really similar like Tapu Storm GX of uh, Tapu Fini GX. But this does not have a limitation so if the opponent only has one Pokemon and play you can win the game that way which is kind of neat I guess so uh, I can see a little bit of niche plays here here and there uh, because of course uh, yeah the Tapu Funi saw a little bit of playing Greninja break so maybe people will try out uh, the uh, shift tree GX for the GX move although it needs two attachments to, in order to do that you can get rid of huge threats like Gardevoir get out of here ho oh GX with the Tapu uh, yeah with the Kikiawi start get out of here so if you manage to get two attachments onto your uh, shift tree GX you might be able to use that so with a shift tree GX, I can see the use a little bit differently. The, for example, you can uh, pre-rotation uh, shuffle the Garbotoxin Garbodor back in the deck. So that could be a nice way to uh, get access to your abilities once again. But other than that, it's not really that uh, great of a GX move to say the least. You don't get one head chaos with it. You only shuffle one of your opponent's Pokemon back in the deck. I know it might see success here and there in certain weird games here and there. But uh, the second attack of shift tree GX is where it will shine. All right, now that we reviewed the card, it's time to look at a couple of deck ideas. First one is pretty obvious and will most likely be the best way to play with shift tree jacks from the bat. And that is to pair it with Zoroar GX. Zoroar GX not only brings consistency but comes packed with a great attack, a righteous beating, which we are all familiar with by now for a double cardless energy. So in theory, this will work like a Zoroar Gardevoir deck, but uh, instead of playing Gardevoir, we will play a 4-4, yeah, uh, of course, a 4-4 line of Zoroark together with a 3-0-2 line of Shift 3 GX, for example. Why don't we play Nuz Leaves as well? Well, it's uh, way too slow in the format. It's a very fast meta game in the standard format, so so uh, we will have to rely, of course, on Rare Candy to get those big HP shift trees out. Okay, now that we uh, uh, have a little bit of rough idea, sketches on uh, the main Pokemon of the deck, we simply need to rely on Bridget and the early game. Post rotation, that can be something like a bunch of Nas Balls or Pokemon Fan Club. So uh, we definitely want some Pokemon uh, on the first turn of the game so we, we can evolve them later. After we set up the bench with some Zoroas and Seedots, we can just uh, give a Grass Energy onto Seedot. And then we evolve onto Zoroark GX the following turn. Rely on a bunch of uh, trade abilities in order to draw into the resources we need like Rare Candy and Shift Tree. And off we are going here, we can get a Shift Tree out easily enough. We give him the double Cars Energy, retreat our active and out of nowhere shift rejects can be dealing a bunch of damage as soon as the second turn so uh, that means if you go first that as well so uh, we just have to retreat our Zoroark with of course things like floatstone guzmo etc the only thing we'll need to do is have the exact same hand size and then shift rejects with a choice band can uh, potentially hit for 210 damage as soon as the second turn how crazy is that we already talked about options to match hand sizes so it'll be ideal to test it out shift rejects with Zoroark GX not only that but we also have cards like multi switch so uh, we'll be able to play Zoroark Jax as we usually would, use a bunch of our Righteous Beating and uh, when the time is right we multi-switch a DCE onto our uh, uh, C dot and boom out of nowhere attach a Grass Energy, a Rare Candy Shift Tree and it can come out of nowhere just like we saw plays with Dangerous Road Jax in the Zoroark Lycan Rock deck so a very sweet combo indeed. The good news about Shift Tree GX is that it uh, not only has a ginormous amount of HP, so in that regard it is way better, it also has a crazy, crazy good weakness. So uh, if we are able to get that extra sensory attack off, we will most likely be able to take a hit, or maybe even two uh, for that matter. So uh, we can just strike twice with that attack, extra sensory, and out of nowhere we can maybe take four prize cards and win the prize race in the end. 
As a bonus, you could also play uh, the one price attacker Shiftry, that is a tool type if you have not heard about it. It also has the attack extra sensory for a, a DCE. The damage output is a little bit less, hitting for 120 damage if you match hand sizes, but uh, yeah, it is a one price attacker and you can hit for both grass weakness and darkness weakness, so things like the Dawn Wings, the Crow's Maw, always need to uh, we uh, worry here because uh, yeah, this little one price attacker can, can make quick work out of that. And that, uh, the first attack for a one price attacking Shiftry is also pretty uh, uh, insane here uh, it is possible to shut down tool cards and stadium cards for the opponent's next turn so uh, if the opponent tries to rely on a choice band a brooklyn hill a floatstone for example all of those things will be shut down during the opponent's next turn even the cards that come into play so all the tool cards yeah, they get ignored. All the stadium cards, poof, they get ignored. So kind of like a Chaos Will here and there, but uh, it shuts down the active equipped tool cards as well. So uh, they don't do anything. So that is awesome. Maybe try that out before rotation. Thinking about other deck ideas with Shift 3GX, it is currently very difficult since it's a stage two, not easy splashable in a lot of decks. I guess Kaleisopod GX might also uh, be worth a shot here. It also relies on a grass and a DCE. So Kaleisopod for the early game pressure, followed up with Shift 3GX that comes out of nowhere to pack the last prize card with the extra sensory attack that could be a deck of its own as well and uh also, shutting down abilities would be kind of sweet, so including things like Garbodor or Garbodoxin could be nice, confusing Pokemon, becoming a little bit of annoying uh, a nuisance here and there, or maybe a little Mach Post rotation might also be worth a shot to try out. You can rely on things like Judge to have the opponent um, have a low hand size, have ability lock going on, and um, you can work your way up there, confusing opponents and then out of nowhere take a bunch of KOs with extra sensory. Or maybe even have the combo with the GX move, putting something in the deck, then using Judge, have ability lock going on, that could also work out. Next deck idea is using the Laurentis, the, the Laurentis promo card here, because for every promo card we can get out, we deal an additional 20 damage with our Grass and Fire type. So we can even pair with Turtonator GX, which also has a great attack, Shell Trap for DCE. So uh, the early game pressure will be with Shell Trap, and then out of nowhere we come with Shift 3 GX, we can uh, confuse them finally uh, with uh, while well, we've uh, evolved in uh, to shift to GX from our little C dot. We can also maybe rely on Leafy on GX uh, to have a little niche role here, evolving everything up. Let's say use uh, EV and energy boom, energy evolution. You get Leafy on out, use Bridget, get a bunch of your. Um, Foment is out and out of nowhere you get a bunch of Laurentis out then you can just get out your shift freak and just confuse people with a bunch of damage maybe timer bells might also help us out I know it sounds a little bit clunky Evo Sura could also work before rotation but it's always fun to think about these deck ideas of course shift rejects not e not the easy splashable Pokemon as we all know him it's a stage 2 but maybe with two Laurentis promo on the field shift rejects is able to hit for 80 damage for a single energy paired out with things like choice band maybe max potions and stuff with 240 HP Pokemon that won't go down easily and confuses Pokemon sounds pretty neat and might just uh, deserve a little bit of testing here and there. Moving forward, I also think people might come up with crazy combos together with unit energy or, or something like that because unit energy makes sure that we can maybe splash with things like Greninja, but that's also stage two, kind of difficult, but it always opens up doors. Of course, the, uh, the thing I would recommend is pairing it with Zoroark Jax because at tournaments, I will uh, imagine if we see Shift Tree, we can see Zoroark because it's the only logical combo that will work out in, uh, yeah, on the, in the tournaments but what do you think awesome subscribers about the shift 3 gx from the celestial storm set do you think it will see play and what will you pair it with definitely let me know in the comment section below let's get a discussion started and also if you have episode suggestions but definitely put them in the comment section as well so we can uh, know what to make next you uh, guys are the watchers you have to decide what you want to uh, an episode about and that pretty much wraps it up once again for an episode on my channel i hope you enjoyed it and if you did be sure to demolish the like button as always as that always helps out the channel tremendously and if you want to see more videos like this feel free to subscribe and that's it uh, i wish you all a very fantastic rest of your day. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next Pokemon TCG video. Peace. If you wanna go and test a deck that isn't played a lot in this format, then listen to what I'll say. If you wanna go and try it out with me, let me know how it does in a tournament. I think it could be really great. Chilling on Sundays, while new ideas pop in.